Hey everyone, I'm doing my John Maxwell and I'm finishing this uh, chapter on Esther. It's the day one of the law of timing and the thought for today, right timing makes a good decision, a better decision. So the scriptures that John Maxwell selected are chapter 5, 1 to 5 and 7, 1 to 8, 8. And basically, there's two things here that he wants us to think about. The first one is that Esther was in the right position. So she had gone from being an orphan, bringing somebody that nobody knew, winning this contest, going into a harem, and now she was in the highest position of the country. And she's been asked for help. She's been asked to help her people to save them. And she basically um, asks them to fast and to pray. And then she'll go to the king and ask for the lives to be spared for her and her people. And so this is about having the right plan. And you'll find that in our Christian tradition, that is part of our plan. We fast, we pray. Um, we don't necessarily put on sackcloth and put dung on our heads like they did in those days. But we do fast and we do pray. In fact, we do the opposite now. We make sure that we're dressed well. We make sure that we look presentable. We put oil on our head and because oil gives the hair a nice smell. Nowadays, you can get many of these scented oils, which are also sacred oils or blessed oils. And so this is what Esther does. And then she goes to the king and she carries out her plan and asks uh, the king not to let this holocaust take place. So for many of us, even though we are taking social actions, we're signing petitions, we're standing with uh, politicians for what we believe in, some of us are also fasting and praying at home, and we're keeping um, this in our own way. In October, the Catholic Church encourages people to say the rosary daily, it's the two months dedicated to the Rosary, October and May. Many of us say it throughout the year. But these are things we can do to deepen our spirituality and to deepen our faith life. And so, again, we come back to this question of timing. Because God is always on our side, but it comes down to a question of timing, of when to carry things out, when to take the advice, when to implement it. Sometimes people can give you advice, but you have to judge whether it's the right time to implement that advice or not, or whether it's a time to wait, or whether it's a time to push forward. And so we have to do that in our own lives. And if you read those chapters, then you can see why Esther did it. She did it because Basically, it was, if she didn't do it, then herself and her whole family would have perished and they would have also been killed because then they would have revealed that she's also a Jew because up until this point, they didn't reveal that she was a Jew. So it's important to remember that. And many Christians did that. And many people did that in the Holocaust. There were people who created fake passports in the church so that Christians and Jews could escape. There were people that um, helped people to escape to other countries and to leave the countries where they were being persecuted. And some of that is probably still happening today. And so is it, is it right uh, when there is a Holocaust taking place and people are being massacred that uh, fake passports are created? The church did it herself. It was done in the church and through the church. There were boatloads of children that were saved through uh, even our popes. Ron Kelly was one of them. So we have to judge sometimes what is good and what is evil. And it may not be what people think it is. So that was the, that chapter for today. I finished it. And... You can read the book of Esther. It is a good book uh, to read. They've made movies about it. And sometimes in order to save our own lives, we have to do these things. We have to wait for the right timing and then speak up. 
and I'm including myself because I know that when I was accused of lying to the police, I could have gone to jail and I could have been put in prison for a very long time. But yet I told the truth, but nobody would stand up for me. So that's why I just, I don't say anything anymore. Even when I go to the church, the priest asks me, how are you? I say, I'm fine, Father. I still don't have a job. Please pray for me. I don't talk to them anymore. Father Gunther was very good to do what he did for me and to stand up for me with the banks. But, um, you know, I think the timing is important. And for us as women, you see it with women and men. You saw it with Lisa Marie Presley when she confronted the corruption in that Church of Scientology. You see it with other artists. You see what happens to them. But sometimes we are lucky. Sometimes God blesses us and he helps us to move out of that situation and to have good lives for the rest of our life. And you saw that with Mandela when he came out of prison with Ahmed Kathrada. Nobody thought they would come out of those prisons. Everybody thought they would be there for the rest of their lives. But so too with me. I managed to get a job at Teleperformance. Yes, it wasn't a management job like I had before. And it wasn't where I was controlling things and I was in charge. But I managed to get a job. So, and I know the banks will say, oh, she has to understand that we didn't have a position. How many years have gone since I left TD? That was in 2007. And the same with all the other banks. That's an excuse. Because if they wanted me to come back, they would have employed me a long time ago. They would have told the recruiters to get in touch with me and to invite me back. So that's the way that I look at it. And it's, it's been hard for me. I've walked the streets the same way I walk the streets now. I've walked the streets for the last 20 years. I've gone to events. I've gone to networking events, events for the unemployed, events for helping others. I have volunteered. Nothing has opened up for me. So I don't know how people can rejoice when I lose my jobs, especially those that I've done nothing to. I've done nothing to deserve it. So it just becomes a drag, really. And even some of my friends, they're like, you're posting all that music on LinkedIn. I said, well, I'm a musician. And some of these mus musicians, people don't know how accomplished they are. So I like to post my music because who knows, maybe I'll, maybe something will open up for me in the music industry. I don't have my own songs. I'm not a songwriter, but I sing other people's songs and I enjoy it. All my childhood music, Rita Coolidge, Chris Christopherson. I used to like them. I used to listen to their music in the war. <laughs> their music was very loving to listen to during the war. All those artists from the seventies. Bay, Bay Street, what? Bay Street Walkers? I think that was one of them. But all that old music, that's how I coped with my music. And Chris Christopherson was very accomplished. He was a Rhodes Scholar. He was in the army. He was a pilot. And then he went on to be an entertainer. He's like Elvis. Elvis was also in the army. But yeah, I like my, I like to post my music. And we have groups for people that uh, care about music and musicians, musicians on LinkedIn. So I join those groups as well. But people should take us seriously just because we artists and musicians and we are creative doesn't mean that we shouldn't be taken seriously. They should take us seriously. So some of these bankers, they bankers by day and DJs by night. <laughs> so. But anyway, it's, I think it's sad. I really do think that, you know, things could have been different in Canada. And I know that other people benefit in the Indian community from what I do. There's all these Knights of Columbus and all that in the church. They all come to my church. I see them all there. They do a lot of good work in America. I went to the Knights of Columbus shop. Day, and I wanted to send a rosary and some things for my 
Me send if you and my mother said no, don't send. I said to her, please take it. She's like, no, I'm not taking it. So I just left it. But anyway, it's, that's how life is now. And I make the most of each day. I go out, I talk to people, I go for my walks. I try to do at least 40 minutes now. And I go downtown. I was even talking to the people at Metro and they were telling, not Metro, at City Market. And they were telling me you should go to events. I said, I do go to events and people do keep me in mind. So we'll see how it all plays out. But for me, my faith has always been central to my life. And I pray at home when I don't go to church. And I pray the rosary. So I do that in my own way. And you can decide. You don't have to only fast when the church tells you and pray when the church tells you. If there's something that you want to fast and pray about, you can do it. The examples are all there in the Bible. And people do it. People change their names when they went to Africa because people with European names got the good jobs. And when you see all the tailors and the, um, you see different names and people think, oh, this must be a white person. And then you find out when they come to the interview that, oh, they're a black person or they're an Indian person. So lots of people did it. And lots of people changed our names when we, when our ancestors converted in the colonies, in Goa, in India, lots of people took on European surnames. So that's how that Bible story is true for us too, because people converted because they had to. People took on fake names that were not their, probably their family names. And it was a matter of survival. Otherwise, how was your family going to survive? Because that's how they got into the colleges. That's how they got into the universities. The name made a difference. So that's my John Maxwell for today. And it's one of the examples that we can look at. And yeah, I am I continue to post my music on my LinkedIn, on my Facebook, my photographs. You never know where that opportunity can come from, where the dots can connect. But I've always been a singer. I've always sang at the choirs in Zimbabwe, in South Africa. I played the organ in South Africa as well at the church. I was part of the choir there. So... I like my music, I enjoy it, and the musicians I listen to are very accomplished. So it's good to reflect on that and how those stories play out in our own lives. Some of us don't have people to guide us and to advise us, so the only thing we can do is to read books like John Maxwell. We can join organizations like John Maxwell or other places where people who have made it to the top and they're earning the big bucks, we can listen to them and we can learn from them. And hopefully the dots connect for us too and those good paid opportunities open up for us too. Because believe you me, I did not, this was not, this is not my Canadian dream to come here and clean toilets and take out the garbage and, uh, you know, clean people's houses, clean people's offices and do all this kind of work that pays minimum wage and even the call center, it's not my dream job. I worked hard to get that HR designation to go to Rotman, to get my training, to sit on boards. I did all that because the end goal was to get a good paid job and to have my own property again, not to live with people, not to get a room in a house and live at somebody else's mercy. That's not my goal. And I'm keeping on, I'm trying my best to do everything that I can to make sure that it happens for me. And if it's not here and it's somebody else, I mean, somewhere else, then that's good. I don't mind at all. But this is not my dream, living in minimum wage, having to sit on the calls and have back-to-back -back calls, three chats at a time. I do it because it's a job, yes, and I take pride in whatever I do, but it's not my goal. And even my singing, my music, that's another aspect of my life that I enjoy. So who knows, let's see where things open up.
and let's see where things go. But definitely for me, I don't plod along. If I was just plodding along, I wouldn't have graduated. I wouldn't have gone to school. I wouldn't be going out every day, talking to people, networking, going to events, doing everything I can to get that good paid job. So I do everything I can and I do pray and I do fast and I would encourage others to do the same.